Hello everyone and welcome to Learn A-Level Biology for free with Miss Estrick. In this video I'll be going through chromosome mutations for A-Level Biology. If you are new here make sure you click subscribe to keep up to date and if you find this helpful please give a thumbs up. So first of all just what we mean by the chromosome mutations. Now this is where there is a change in the number of chromosomes. And just like with gene mutations, this change happens spontaneously. Um, and it's by a process called non-disjunction in meiosis. So we'll go through what non-disjunction is. So this is when either the chromosomes in meiosis one do not separate equally, or the chromatids in meiosis two do not separate equally in anaphase. And as a result, the resulting gamete, which is made in meiosis, will not have the correct number of chromosomes. And there's two types of effects that this non-disjunction can have. You can either have polyploidy or aneuploidy. And polyploidy, poly meaning many, is when every single chromosome is affected. So you will get a whole additional set of chromosomes. So instead of creating a diploid gamete, you would create a triploid gamete. Aneuploidy is when just one single chromosome is affected. So you will still create a gamete, which is haploid, but it might have one additional or one too few chromosomes. So we'll go through both of these with diagrams just to fully explain that. So polyploidy, just again, I said it's a change in the whole set of chromosomes. So if meiosis occurs without chromosome mutations, the result should be haploid gametes. Now I've labeled this as human gam gametes as haploid. However, I'm only actually showing three chromosomes there instead of 23, just because it wouldn't be able to fit 23 in. And when two human haploid gametes fuse, you end up with a diploid cell, meaning two copies of every chromosome. And that's what this 2N is referring to. And that's what a non-mutated human body cell or somatic cell should have. However, if polyploidy occurs, which is when there's a mutation resulting in an extra set of chromosomes, you could get triploid or tetraploid zygotes. Now in humans that would be fatal. So if you did have that occurring the zygote wouldn't successfully develop into a fetus. Uh, but you do see this quite commonly in plants. So we'll go through how the non-disjunction occurs to create a tetraploid or triploid. So first of all we'll just stick to three homologous chromosomes because I won't be able to fit 23 in a diagram. But you would have 23 homologous pairs in humans. And at this stage, we can see each pair is doubled. And that's because I'm starting from the point of DNA replication already occurring in interphase. So in this case, I'm going to show non-disjunction occurring in the first round of division, which we call meiosis one. And all of the chromosomes fail to separate equally if it's polyploidy non-disjunction. So after meiosis one, we now have all of the chromosomes in one cell, and this cell is empty of chromosomes. Now meiosis two, I'm going to say happens normally, meaning that all of the chromatids do separate equally. Now for this one, there were no chromosomes here, so we don't have any chromatids separating, and there's no chromosomes in either of those gametes. However, in this one, this cell had all of the chromosomes moving into it. Now meiosis two, there is normal division. So now all of these chromatids will separate equally to the opposite poles in anaphase. And that means the resulting gametes, we do see the chromatids have separated to these single chromosomes. But we have two copies of every chromosome because there were both of the homologous pairs in this cell. So instead of creating the N or haploid gametes, we now have diploid gametes. 
So if we have a look then at what would happen if one of these diploid gametes fused or fertilized with a normal haploid gamete. So here's our mutated gamete, which is diploid. Here is a normal haploid gamete where you only have one copy of each homologous pair. When they fuse, we join all of those chromosomes together in fertilization. And that is how we now have three copies of every single chromosome. And that's what we call a triploid. And that is how we get this change in the whole set of chromosome. And we have three sets. Now, if that happened again, you could end up with four sets. As I said, this is polyploidy. When you get an additional set of chromosomes, but you mainly only see it in plants, it wouldn't occur in humans. If it did, this zygote that was created wouldn't survive. Now, just to show you again, this can happen with the non-disjunction in meiosis 2 as well. So we have this time normal division and all of the chromosomes separate equally in meiosis 1. However, in meiosis 2, for this cell, I've said there is normal division. So all the chromatids separate equally and we get two haploid gametes. However, this cell, the chromatids do not separate equally. They're all pulled to one pole. And as a result, we get a 2N or diploid gamete again. And this, chromos this one has no chromosomes. So the second type of chromosome mutation is the aneuploidy. And this is where there's just a change in the number of one individual chromosome. So this time, just one of the individual homologous pairs, um, the chromosomes fail to separate during meiosis. And as a result, the zygote that would be made from these gametes would have either one extra or one too few chromosomes. And this is an example, or an example is Down syndrome. Now, again, I'm going to demonstrate all of that with the diagrams. So again, we're going to have three homologous chromosomes. They're already doubled because of DNA replication, non-disjunction meiosis 1. But because this is aneuploidy, it's just one of the chromosomes does not separate equally. And I've shown that it's this red one. And both of those red homologous pairs are pulled to the left pole. The purple and the yellow do separate equally. So there's one of each of those homologous pairs in the new cells. Meiosis 2 happens normally. So all of the chromatids separate equally. And this is the resulting gametes that are made. So this time, they're all haploid cells because we still only have one set. However, these ones are missing the red chromosome. So we describe this as N minus one, meaning it is a haploid gamete, but it's missing one chromosome. These two are haploid gametes, except they have one additional chromosome. So they have one additional red chromosome. So if we have a look what happens when either of these types of gametes fuse, we can see here the N plus 1 gamete, if it is fusing and fertilizing with a normal gamete, we end up with a diploid cell plus one extra chromosome. And this links back to what I was saying with the introduction on aneuploidy. So we now have on fertilization, the zygote is haploid, but it has an additional chromosome. And this is one form of Down syndrome. So we have three copies. And in Down syndrome, that would be three copies of chromosome 21. If we have a look at if it was the N minus one gamete, again, we have a diploid zygote made, but it's 2N minus one. 2N meaning it's diploid, two copies of each chromosome. However, it's minus one because we're missing the second copy of that red chromosome. Now, as I did with the polyploidy, just to point out, you can get the non-disjunction happening in meiosis 2. So if we have a look, we have normal division and the chromosomes separate equally this time in meiosis 1. But in meiosis 2, I'm showing that in this one, all of the chromatids do separate equally and we get two haploid gametes. However, this is the cell where one of the chromatids fails to separate equally. 
and we end up with n minus 1 and n plus 1. So that is it for chromosome mutations. I hope that's helped you to understand aneuploidy and polyploidy.